Hi everyone, Mary here, and this little video is all about how to submit homework online. Now, I'm making one video for all my classes, physics, astronomy, chemistry, salon science, whatever it is, so please adjust what is being said depending upon what class you are taking. It is tricky communicating in an online environment, and the hints I'm going to give you are based on information that past students have found. Um, I'm going to give you some hints, some techniques, and the goal is to make it a little smoother and faster for you to figure out how exactly you should submit your assignments for this particular class. Now, in both my physics and astronomy classes, there are going to be labs and study guides. Those labs and study guides need to be in the original document format. So for a study guide, it is a question and, and fill in the blank answer. Um, labs, you're going to be asked to put in data and uh, do some calculations. And those must be in the original format that they were given to you. Um, please know that you cannot just write the answers on a blank piece of paper. Uh, we're, in a, we're a team here, you and I, and if I have had students in the past who just try and put their answers on blank paper, and quite frankly, it is too cumbersome and it is too awkward for me to grade them. So if you do turn in something on just typing paper or ruled paper with the answers from an assignment, it will be returned to you, and I will ask you to put it back in the original format before it will be graded. And you're going to end up with a sad face if I do that, but that is just because of the fact that it is just very difficult to grade if it comes in in a weird, stray, odd form. Now, mathematical homework problems. If you're in astronomy, have no fear. We don't do those in astronomy. So this applies only to the physics and the chemistry classes. Um, the problems must be fully worked out on separate paper. So this is a complete contradiction to what I just said, but let's talk about these for a moment. Um, the homework problems are given and you need to fully work those out on a separate collection of pieces of paper and turn those in. All work must be shown. You cannot just pencil in the answers after the questions. Why? Well, I give you the answers at the end of the page. So copying the answers in the right spot, you are not going to earn any credit for that. Um, that's just common sense. The goal for these is that you actually work through the problems. How do you submit assignments in Canvas? For every assignment in Canvas, in the upper right-hand corner, there is going to be a Submit Assignment button. So when you're ready to turn in an assignment, you click that button. The next thing, the next thing that's going to come up is you're going to see a screen that's going to look something like this. Now, if you have done an assignment via typing the answers in, you can hit choose a file and you can bring it up from the memory on your computer or if you have it stored in another source. Uh, for example, this is a study guide done by Minnie Mouse and um, she typed the answers into this study guide. Now you do not have to put your answers in another color. I find it handy for me when I'm looking at it, but you certainly do not need to do that. After you've completed your assignment, your study guide, or your lab, and you've typed answers in, please save it with an appropriate name into your computer, and then you can simply upload it into Canvas, click Submit Assignment, and it will go into Canvas for grading. If you choose not to type in answers, but you choose to print a paper copy of the assignment, write in the answers by hand, um, and that is always absolutely fine. I'm a paper and pencil girl. I like writing with a pencil. Um, if it happens to be a multi-page assignment, um, please scan that, and we'll talk about scanning apps in a moment, but please scan the entire thing as one document. Very often in scanners, it is called a batch file, 
and one assignment is going to be one file that you upload. So this student um, uploaded one study guide as one document, and that is a good example. This is an example of someone who didn't do it terribly well. This person had, there was nine homework problems for this chapter, and this person uploaded nine separate documents for me to look at. Quite frankly, that's a real pain, and so I had to open a separate document to look at each individual homework problem. So please don't do that. That's not how you make friends. Um, scanning apps. If you have an Apple phone or tablet in the notes part of your device, there is a built-in scanner and you can search online how to use that if you want some tricks. If you have an Android, Google, Galaxy, or some other type of phone, please search online depending upon the device. Your phone may already have a built-in scanner. So if it has one, Yahoo, life is good. If it does not, um, go to your app store, look for a scanning app that has good reviews. There are many of them that are free. And when you scan documents in, again, look for that batch scan so that you can do multiple pages as one file. Okay, what if the lab or the assignment you are doing requires that you have to do an awful lot of drawing or an awful lot of math? Physics, we're going to do a lot of math. Astronomy, we're going to do an awful lot of drawing. Now, I highly recommend that you do the drawing and the math by hand. Why? It's hard to type math. I've taught science and physics for a long time. Yuck, this is yuck to type. It's yucky. And it is very difficult to draw with a mouse or try and do math on a screen with, some, with a mouse. It's going to look ugly no matter how you do it. So it is much easier. It's more intuitive. Your thoughts can flow more freely if you can do this on a piece of paper with your pencil or pen. So I recommend you do it on paper. Then how do you get it online? Well, let's talk about that. One option is that you print the original lab or study guide, complete the complete assignment on paper, then scan it in the complete document in batch mode and submit it. Um, the challenge for some people is this right here, printing. Truthfully, ladies and gentlemen, especially in astronomy, it's going to be faster and easier for you in the long run if you can once every month, once every two months, once every six weeks or whatever, find a place that you can just print the next batch of study guides and labs and then have these and um, do it this way, it's going to be just so much faster than you trying to fiddle diddle around with trying to do this online. So that's my recommendation. You don't have to follow it, but that's my recommendation. The second option is a hybrid option. If you do not have a printer, you are living in deepest, darkest, weird part of the country and you just can't get a printer. Um, here is an option that you can do, and this is what some students have figured out. They can type in part of their answers. They can draw or do the math on plain old ordinary paper. And then for each calculation or each sketch, they take an individual photograph of that, and then they submit that photograph in the correct spot in the lab or the assignment, and then they type when they need to type. So this works. Um, it's a very creative solution. Here's another example. This happens to be a physics, an online physics example, where there are data that is put in the data table. This happens to be typed in. The equation is typed in, but the actual calculation this person did by hand took a photo and uploaded the photo in the correct spot. Here's another example from my physics class. The individual typed the answers in down here. There was a graph that was made in Excel, copied and pasted the graph, and the graph was inserted in the correct spot in the lab. If you are going to insert the photo of the calculation and the sketches into the lab itself, 
please put it in the correct spot. So for example, if it says in the, in the assignment, please in the space below, please calculate this, please show me the, the graph of that, please put it in that spot. Because remember, you and I are in this together. It's all about a communication and you want to make this easy on me so I can find you, find what you've done so I can give you the points for it. Please don't make me hunt all over creation because if I have to hunt all over for what you've turned in, you're not going to get as good a grade. Uh, please do not turn in lots of stray images that I have to try and figure out where they should go in your lab. Please don't do that. Um, that is rude and it's not going to be good for your overall grade. So remember, communicating online is tricky. We are in this together. If you have any questions, please ask and we'll figure this out. And yes, 